Hey everybody, Mike Naso here from IPR365.com and PodWeather.com with the latest on the tropics. For the last six hurricane seasons, you've heard that. Well, get used to it if you're viewing these because hurricane season 2011 is upon us and it looks to be another above average year. And it looks like uh, we could have quite a few storms this year. The question is, will they strike land? And you just can't tell this far out, but needless to say, you should be getting prepared if you live in an area that could be impacted by a tropical cyclone. When we take a look at the satellite imagery out there this evening, you can clearly see we have an invest. Uh, it had to be an invest. It was getting a little bit too discernible on satellite to uh, just go away. And it's Invest 93L sitting here off the Carolina coastline. It's moving on off towards the west-southwest at a pretty good clip, and it is forecast to bring moisture into Florida and then kind of loop around in the northern Gulf. Just how strong it gets if it develops right now is not looking like it'd do anything significant, uh, nothing like a hurricane or anything like that. But is there always a shot that something like this could become our first name storm? You bet there is. And it doesn't even have to be June to do that. And if you remember just three short years ago, Tropical Storm Arthur uh, was uh, named on the 31st of May into June 1st, and that impacted the Caribbean. And when we look down there, clearly there's a lot of moisture down there tonight. And uh, the model guidance has been indicating for a good while now that there's going to be a low pressure, which we now have down there, and it's going to kind of meander northward. Now some of the models, like the GFS, kind of break off a piece of energy and then kind of bring another one up here. We'll talk about this and see if there's anything out there. Right now, nothing organized, but this is the time of year to be looking down here for tropical cyclone formation, and we're going to have to wait and see uh, just what Mother Nature has in store for us if that is the case. I did want to update you that these are the names for the 2011 hurricane season, and uh, if you recognize the names, that's because it seems like yesterday they were used in 2005. To be honest, it seems like yesterday they were used in 1999. The first storm will be named Arlene. I have a feeling we'll get Arlene this month, uh, possibly even in the next week or so, if uh, model guidance is correct. You could also recognize Brett was a very serious hurricane in 99 that threatened Texas, although it hit an unpopulated area and the name was not retired. Cindy hit near New Orleans as a hurricane six years ago. Don's a new name after Dennis was retired. Emily, believe it or not, was not retired, and we'll use that name again this year. Franklin replaced Floyd in 99, and the list goes on, of course. Katrina, Rita, Stan, and Wilma were stricken from the list in 2005, and Katia, Rena, Sean, and Whitney are those replacement names for it. Now here's the model guidance on Invest 93L and uh, you can see the current motion would take it right over uh, areas like Hollandale and Fort Lauderdale and then Western Cuba, uh, Belize, straight into the Eastern Pacific over five days. That's how fast it's moving. Literally we'd be talking about two days from now it'd be in Cuba, three days from now it'd be over Central America, five days from now way down here at 9 North and what is that? 97 west, but it's not going to keep that motion. It's going to eventually bend back west towards the Florida Peninsula and then maybe loop around here into the southern United States. Now, that could present a few problems. There's been flooding, of course, in areas here of the United States that we've been dealing with with the Mississippi River. You don't need any more moisture. So anytime there's any threat of any kind of moisture envelope moving in this direction, it's going to keep a watchful eye on it. That's what you got to be doing. But right now, there's no discernible center of circulation, although there is a little bit of a spin to it. I'll show you in just a second. You can see our system in the Caribbean. We do have the UK Met that was ran at 12Z, pulling our system here towards the Cayman Islands. We'll see if that becomes an invest. I have a feeling it very well may do so over the next, say, 12 to 18 hours. If, if it bursts overnight, we'll have to wait and see on that. Here's our Invest 93L, and you can see this beautiful, long water vapor loop showing this evolution of how these thunderstorms continue to build. You can see they're firing right now, and uh, there's, uh, say, Charleston, South Carolina in this area here, and it is moving at such a fast rate that I have a feeling that we're talking no more than uh, 12 hours before these uh, cloud bands here begin to enter the Georgia and northeast Florida coastline. And I don't think it's going to have time to develop. I think that might be its biggest problem. If it was sitting stationary 
whether or not it was subtropical or tropical or even favorable for development, it would probably have a better shot than this rapid rate of speed. But nevertheless, uh, it's still something with moisture, still something tropical that we're going to have to keep an eye on. And it is moving towards the United States. So it's going to bring moisture there. And that's always why we need to keep a watchful eye on it. And we'll do that here at Internet Partnership Radio. Now here's the Caribbean, the visible satellite imagery throughout the day. And you can see we clearly have a spin right in here. Watch this area I just circled there. Watch that little twist there right at the end. See that? That is a, uh, that's an area of low pressure, uh, without a doubt. And uh, there is a lot of moisture down here. And last year, Alex came out of this region. In 2008, it was Arthur. In uh, 2005, it was Arlene, which would be the first named storm this year. So we are watching this area very carefully. Right now, you see this kind of flatness here, this wind shear. That is unfavorable for development. But any time you get shear impacting an area that would like to develop, which this system would like to develop, uh, it can be persistent. It can be very persistent. It can blow up. It can keep blowing up and get irritated. And uh, the more irritated it gets by these bursts of shear, the more likely it is to keep firing. And persistence is the key with tropical development. So that's why we're going to have to watch this system and see exactly what it does, if anything, whether that would be some kind of a stationary movement and then a slow drift like that towards the uh, Yucatan Channel in the Gulf of Mexico, whether like the UK Met says it's going to move north, or if it's going to get so caught up and end up out here north of the Greater Antilles and the Bahamas, that's something we're going to have to watch very carefully. Nonetheless, moisture down there in the Caribbean Sea, probably some rough weather as well uh, that we're going to have to deal with as this system uh, persists. Right now it is persisting. Now here's the Canadian model from earlier uh, on the 31st and you can see that it does keep our low down there and look at that at the end. That is a nasty little spin up here. That that looks like a favorable spin showing up here that I would not want to have to deal with if I were in the Yucatan Peninsula. Watch that again. Look at the way that cranks up. That would be a tropical storm for sure and uh, that's not what we want to see. Uh, if you live in areas of the Caribbean, you can see it does take a piece of moisture and kind of pulls it out to sea here and then kind of keeps another one down here for a few days and starts to draw it north. So there is some indication that there's going to be some kind of break in the moisture and some may head up in this direction and there may be some residual rainfall left behind in the Caribbean that we'd have to watch. But certainly if that were the case, the way that blah, 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 spins right up, that's a little scary there. I think it's scarier what I just did rather than the model, but still, you know what I'm talking about here. So we're going to watch this area very carefully. And here's why. You can see the sea surface temperatures are plenty warm in the Caribbean to support a hurricane, even a major hurricane. Wind shear's not. The sea surface temperatures are. And they're warming up through the Gulf Stream, the loop current in here in the Gulf of Mexico, off Africa. It's too early for development right now, but as time goes by, we'll see those waters continue to warm and the area continue to get more favorable for development. So again, the Atlantic today, we do have our invest up here, 93L, which is looking interesting. It's going to move in this general direction. Development doesn't seem likely at this point, but some of the model guidance does show this getting as strong as a minimal tropical storm. So we're gonna have to watch it. And down in the Caribbean, this is just an area of very, very hotbed of activity for this time of year. We have to keep a close eye on it in case anything does spin up, as we will do. Now, the Eastern Pacific looks quiet, although the model guidance has suggested we'll get some activity there in the next uh, 7 to 10 days. The Western Pacific, we've had a little bit of activity, and we do today. You can see there is definitely a low pressure area here moving towards Taiwan. And look at this interesting feature. This could be a tropical cyclone. If you see that spin in here, there's definitely a curvature to this wave. And the waters are warm, so we'll wait and see if anything gets going out there. I'm Mike Naso from Internet Partnership Radio. That's the latest on the tropics for the first day of the 2011 hurricane season. I'll see you next time.